Yo, what's poppin' people? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're running a tip video. You guys love the tip videos. Today, we're gonna be making it happen. We're gonna be talking about how to catch more bass in small ponds. I've had a bunch of you guys comment that down below. Today's episode, we're gonna cover it. If you have any more tip video suggestions, drop a comment down below. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you guys are new to the channel. Also, hit the little notification bell and the like button if you guys have been liking the videos. Before we even hop into it, we got the Big Bass Energy hats, guys. We got this one right here. This is the uh, this is the original. We've almost sold out, guys. We got a few left. We actually just got a couple more in stock. Um, these are the original Big Bass Energy hats. Thank you guys so much for everyone that's purchased one. It really means the world to me. It's awesome to see people walking around repping them. And you guys are going to be one of the first repping the first gen Big Bass Energy hat. And also, we have the Neon Cryptic series that's gonna be coming out very soon. It could be on the website right now. So if you guys wanna go check it out, go click the link down below. You can either do it right now or wait till the video is over and go check out, see if the new Cryptic Neon series Big Bass Energy hats are available. And you can also check the whole Big Bass Energy collection out. You know, we got sweatshirts, we got t-shirts, we got hats, we got everything, guys. We're gonna have a lot of stuff coming out very soon. I'm so excited for it. It's just awesome to see the supporters repping the brand big bass energy out there so as you guys saw by the title we're gonna be talking about small ponds today this pond right here me and my granddad when i was very young this is actually probably where i caught my first bass ever was out on this pond and me and my granddad used to catch a bunch of big fish out here and we're gonna be talking about it today so let's go ahead and walk over here and take a look at the pond um as you guys can tell it's, it's not big at all i mean it's just a big old bowl it's just a big circle there's not much out there it's pretty flat it's got a little drop off in the middle got a little tree over there got some shade over here in this corner and it's got some natural water flow that comes in from a creek in that corner there used to be some massive fish in here and I know there's still some big ones because last year I caught a few really good fish the year before or maybe like three years ago I caught like a five six pounder I know they're in here guys me and my granddad caught some eight and nine pounders in here and it's just cool to come back to this place and kind of revisit it and uh, do some fishing today so we're pretty much gonna start off this video by talking about you know where are these fish positioned in these small ponds what you should look for what you should be targeting what you should be throwing at and um, we're also going to be talking about a few baits today i actually went to walmart i'm very low on my six cent stock right now um, but i went to walmart picked up a few things i'm going to be talking about the baits talking about different ways to work them talking about where to throw the baits pretty much bass behavior and where the fish are going to go in small condensed areas like this so this is going to be a very informative video i think you guys are going to learn a lot from it if not you can at least th that's the thing about fishing guys you can learn from anybody there's so much stuff to fishing and there's no rules to fishing everything everybody does stuff differently so it's going to be a good one let's go ahead and hop into it i think before i even talk about the layout of the pond and where these fish are going to be positioned we're going to talk about a few of the baits that i brought out today why i brought them out and then we're going to dive into where we should be casting those baits and then we're going to dive into how i'm working those baits so let's go ahead and hop in all right so as i said i went by walmart what's what's the fishing video without walmart you know and uh we got a few things in here today and uh, I'm going to talk about it. So let's go ahead and look at what, what exactly did we buy. Let's go ahead. We're just going to lay them out right here. So these are some black and blue Sankos right here. As you guys can tell, it's got a blue little tail on it right there. And um, I usually use the Clout by Six Cents. That's one of my favorite soft plastics, but I'm currently out of it. So I had to, had to go to Walmart and scoop some. We got some basic EWG hooks. Nothing to them. Those are 4 uh, EWGs. If you guys didn't know what EWG stands for, extra wide gap and i also got some tungsten weights i didn't even know this was a thing i did not know that walmart sold tungsten weights so that was pretty cool and these are actually 316 sounds if you guys don't know the difference between lead and tungsten one thing tungsten is going to be a lot more expensive um, compared to a lead weight you can have a 316 sounds lead weight and if you lay it next to a tungsten the tungsten is going to be half the size if that it's a lot heavier weight and then the last little thing that we got these are actually the rage ned cutter worms i've never seen these before i saw them at walmart and i was like you know what this is a good little talking point today and uh we're gonna be trying those out and then i have one more bait actually on my rod and it is a basic fluke and this fluke is actually weighted which will probably take that weighted hook off um, but this is another bait that we're gonna be talking about today all these baits right here you're gonna be able to catch fish on year round i know you guys are probably watching this all year round so i didn't really want to focus this video just on the fall well, we're going to be talking about that as well today if you guys didn't know in the fall time the fish are feeding up they're getting fat they're chasing bait fish up shallow and one of my favorite baits in the fall has to be a fluke 
So we had to whip that out today. As far as the Senko goes, the Ned Rick, other soft plastics, those baits are gonna be good year round. I don't care what time you're fishing, they're gonna eat that. Anything slow moving like that, you can throw it year round, guys. January through December, fish are gonna eat it. And by the way, if you guys were wondering what combo I have, this is my Pro TI. I actually have 17 pound fluorocarbon. If I was most of you guys, I'd probably stick to 15 pounds. And I have this paired up on my mock crush rod. Not the prettiest combo in the world, but guess what guys, I came out of town, this is what I had, and I've been using this one for a while. This rod with this reel actually pairs up pretty good, and uh, I've been a big fan of it. So let's go ahead and walk around this pond for a second and talk about where we're gonna be fishing today. All right, so when you're coming to these small ponds, the biggest thing that you're thinking about is like, man, I'm just gonna cover the whole pond. I'm just gonna cast everywhere, and that's completely fine. That is, that is perfectly fine, but one thing to think about, you're gonna get a lot more bites, if you fish the right stuff. And what I mean by that, let's go ahead and look at this pond and see how it lays out. We got this corner over here, and uh, one thing I wanna pay attention to, we just walked out to this pond, beautiful little area, nothing big. And the first thing that I notice, there's a bunch of sun beating down on that bank, and this whole side of the pond right here is all in the shade. That's something to pay attention to. If you guys are watching this video in the summer especially, this is gonna be a prime spot. Those bass are going to be getting out of that sun. They're going to be getting in this shade, getting under that cover, doing whatever it takes to get out of that hot weather. Like I said, I'm not going to be focusing this video just on fall fishing. We're going to be talking about year round pond fishing. So if we walk over here a little bit more, I'm going to hope to not find any snakes. That's the last thing that Noah wants to do right now. I'm not a big fan of snakes, by the way. I'm not. I, I don't like snakes. And uh, we're probably just going to walk about this far. Actually, we got to walk a little bit more for me to show you what I want to show you. Another thing that I'm going to look at when I come to ponds that's very important. When you got these small areas, you got to think. There's either going to be a ton of fish in these ponds or it's going to be a little bit pressured. There's not going to be a ton of bass. In this one in particular, years ago, there used to be a ton of fish. Now, there's not many. So the things I'm going to pay attention to right now is the cover in the water. And Noah, what do you exactly mean by that? If you look right across the pond over here, I'm, I'm sure you guys can see it. There is a big lay down laying in the water right there. That is a perfect spot for bass to tuck up under and position themselves on. If you know one thing about largemouth bass, they love wood. If I can say anything about spotted bass, they love rock. So that's something to think about. When you're going pond fishing, 99% of the ponds are largemouth bass. So if you see cover like that, you see wood, you need to be fishing that. That's where these bass are going to be pushed up on. Another topic to talk about. Right here, like I said at the beginning, there's a little creek that floods in here. You got moving water, you got natural water coming into this pond. This is a great little area for bass to stage up around. They can push up shallow, they can feed up on some bait fish, they can pull off, they can get under that cover. They can also be protected in this shade over here. This is a little hot spot over here at this pond. Some other little spots to pay attention to, you know, we talked about cover, we talked about lay downs in the ponds, but let's say there's a dock, you know, there, there's a dock in this pond. You know, that can be a great, whoa, camera, what you doing? That can be a great little area for those bass to hang under, to hang around. It can be awesome to skip a little worm up under there. It can be awesome to skip a jig. There can also be some rock piles, guys. And I'm not just talking about rock that's along the bank or riprap that's along the bank, but there could be some boulders out there in the middle. There could be some good looking structure on the bottom. And that's something to pay attention to. And a lot of people ask me, Noah, how do you know if there's drop-offs in a pond? Noah, how do you know if there's brush piles in a pond that you visually can't see with your eye? It's all going to be with that casting. It's all going to be with that covering water, feeling what's on the bottom, counting your bait down. That's one of the biggest things. When you have a drop-off in a pond and I'm trying to figure out the depth, I'm going to throw my bait out there and I'm going to count down how long it takes for my bait to hit the bottom, then I can judge what the depth is. So you know, if I throw 10 foot off the bank and it's flat as can be, you know, my bait's not sinking, but I whip my bait out 20 foot off the bank and it starts to drop off, that's gonna tell me between that 10 foot off the bank and 20 foot is where the bank goes like this and drops off. And those drop offs are very important because those bass are gonna sit up on that drop off for many of reasons. Those bass can easily position themselves on that drop off. The flat is on the bank, right? Those bass can come off the drop off and come feed bait fish. 
feed on bait fish and what they'll do is they'll ambush the bait and why do they want to ambush the bait up on the bank and on that flat let me show you so say we have a drop off out there there's bass sitting on that drop off these bass are hungry they want some food right they're going to come up that drop off they're going to push up right here on this flat where a bunch of these brim a bunch of these bait fish are at and they're going to pin the bait along the bank and why do the bass do that if they're trying to chase bait fish out here in the middle they could be running around the bait fish can go anywhere and it's going to be a lot harder for those bass to eat the bait when the bait's up here and the bass ambush from this side these bait fish are trapped there's only one direction that they can go is either down the bank or they can go towards the bass which is going to result in the bait fish being eaten so it's very simple guys these bass are going to come up they're going to feed they're going to have this ambush point and these bait fish can't go anywhere. I've seen it on many different locations, not just in ponds, not just in lakes, everywhere. Rivers where bass are over here hitting bait fish up on the bank. It's because they can't go anywhere. I literally see bait fish as I'm talking right here. So offshore structure is very important. And another reason why the offshore stuff is going to be even more important to you guys than anything is because if you're going to a pressured area, just about everybody is going to throw at the laydowns on the bank. They're gonna throw at the dock that's sitting on the pond. They're gonna throw at that riprap bank that's hanging on the edge. But one thing, when you have 10 people, all 10 of them can see those laydowns, right? But only two of them know that there's a brush pile in the middle of that pond. So that's why it's very important, especially in pressured areas, because those fish have only seen two baits in the last week rather than 10. So it's very important guys that's why it's great to be versatile and know different things about where these fish are going to be sitting in these ponds and drop offs are very important fishing out in the middle is very important a lot of these ponds are going to be flat and it's going to be easier just to chuck a lipless crankbait or something moving and cover a lot of water but if you know exactly where those bass are going to position that's when you're going to catch more fish all right without further ado we're going to hop into this we're about to start doing some fishing i'm going to talk to you guys about how i work the baits personally what i like and uh, we're gonna see if we can catch some fish today. I'm actually gonna start off with this fluke right here. This is actually a blue glimmer fluke. It's not a basic pearl white. This is actually gonna be great in the sun. It's gonna reflect off this bait. It's gonna put off that glow. Um, on more of cloudy conditions, I like using a regular pearl white fluke. But in today, we're gonna be using this one right here. We're gonna go ahead and go cover some water along this bank edge over here and see if we can get some of these aggressive bass that are feeding up on these bait fish right now during the fall. And then we're gonna come back and we're gonna tie on that Sanko or maybe that Ned rig, slow down. So pay attention to what I'm doing. I'm starting off with a moving bait, right? And this is almost a hybrid. You can work this very slow or you can work it very fast. I'm starting off with something I can cover water with. And then if they're not eating this, I'm gonna go to a bait that I'm soaking on the bottom. That's something to pay attention to. All right, guys, it is time to get it started. So I'm looking at the pond right here and I noticed something. I see some cover about 10 foot off the bank. There was an old dock that was actually here. And now there's just two little wood pilings, two little wood pillars. And that's something that a bass could tuck up under on. There's also a little bit of grass up on it. So it's gonna be something I'm gonna throw at. I'm gonna check that fluke out here. Like I said, I got a weighted hook on this, which I wish I didn't. And these, oh, no way. No way, he just hit me. There's, there's no way I was, Okay. That was uh, one I didn't expect to catch a fish on my first cast. I just didn't. And sometimes that's good luck, sometimes it's bad luck. And uh, that's not really this. Oh my gosh, I'll poke the camera lady in the face. <laughs> that is uh, one of the smallest bass that I could possibly catch. He is not much bigger than that fluke right there. I'm going to tell you, a five pound bass would probably try to eat this little guy. That is crazy. That, that's very weird. I actually had one about a pound and a half about to eat it. And uh, this little guy just decided to come up. He was hungry. He wanted to eat it. Guess what? One thing I always say, it doesn't matter the first fish of the day. It doesn't matter the size. Just gets the monkey off your back. Then you can go catch some more and get her back in the water. I threw that fish almost over the fence too. That was, I almost didn't even think I had a fish on. I just lifted up and the fish was already 15 foot behind me. Well, that is um uh, interesting, guys. I didn't. 
didn't expect that but that does tell us one thing you know those fish there's a multiple fish there's more than just one i'm telling you there's one about a pound and a half that almost ate me that was actually right on that cover right there so something to pay attention to you know there's not a ton of cover into this pond but what i'm going to say is that sometimes a better thing you know, it's sometimes better to have five laydowns than 50 laydowns because those fish are going to be more condensed on the laydowns that are provided to them. So we're going to make a few casts right here. We're going to work down this bank. We got some of that sun glimmering on that bank. We're going to see if we have any of these fall aggressive bass that are ready to feed up on some bait fish. There's also some rock right here that we're going to be casting around. I'm just hoping we get a big one today, guys. I'm really hoping that was not the size of fish that we wanted, but uh, oh my gosh, there, right there, there's a fish that just ate a, ate a piece of bait up shallow. That thing was lightning fast. He's actually up in this grass. Where did he go? He's sitting up here somewhere unless he skirted out. I just randomly saw, he wasn't even a big bass. He was a little bit smaller than that last one, but he chased a little tiny bluegill right up in this grass. And that's exactly what I was talking about. Yeah, you can see a little bait fish. Man, well, let's, uh, let's keep fishing. Notice what I'm doing right here, guys. I'm throwing parallel to this bank. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take this moving bait, I'm gonna take this fluke, I'm gonna walk down this bank, I'm gonna throw a parallel. I'm gonna cover the edge of the bank. Once I'm done covering that edge of the bank, I'm gonna walk back to myself and I'm gonna start casting in the middle of the pond. So I'm covering not only on the bank, but I'm covering offshore on that little drop off that I was talking about. And uh, that's when you're really going to learn what the fish are doing that day. You know, you might only catch one fish along the bank, and all of a sudden you start fishing off on that drop-off and you catch about six. Then you're going to be like, you know what? These fish are on the drop-offs today, and that's what they want. And then that's when you double down and you really start catching a lot more fish. Oop. There he is. Oh, he came off. Right here, guys, you got the sunny bank that we just fished down. We didn't have any bites. We get to this corner of the pond. This bank right here has this little bush. It's casting a shadow on the water. That's exactly where that fish was. He's right there in that shade. All right, we just went around the pond with this moving bait. I'm gonna cut it off. Just had that one fish on the first cast. Hope we're not having some bad luck creep up on us, guys. I had a couple more bites, just from really small ones, and I haven't been here in a while. So now we're gonna slow down, and we're gonna put a slow moving bait on. I'm actually gonna put this moo, uh, the moo rig, the Ned rig on, see if they're gonna bite it. Something a little bit slower, something that's subtle, see if these fish want it. And I'm also gonna go fish over by that tree. I'm tying a basic uni knot. If you guys wanna see the video on how to tie that just go on youtube type in kicking their bass best fishing knot in the video would pop up it's my favorite knot of all time i know you guys probably heard me say that a hundred times and this actually has a little tiny tail on it i like that i want to see if these bass want that right now here we go guys walking on the other side Ooh. that was a frog freaked me out it was a nasty spider holy cow Look at that. I don't know if you guys can see that thing. We talked about fishing all this cover and the big tree is definitely the biggest piece of cover in this pond. We're about to start casting all around it. There's gotta be fish on it. This Ned rig has an exposed hook, so I'm praying I, oh my God, look at that, look at that. Fish just blew up right there, please eat it. No! Why not hook set like that on a Ned rig? That was him. I let, he literally just blew up, I threw in there and he ate it. Now hook a tree. Oh my gosh, guys. There he is. Little tiny guy. Man. This is kind of starting to worry me, guys. I know there's big fish. You guys should have saw the size of fish that me and my granddad used to catch out of here, but this pond hasn't been stocked or really well maintained in years. But I know there's some bigger ones than that. There's gotta be some bigger ones than these fish that I just caught. Man, let's keep on casting. He's right there on that lay down though. That just shows. Who cares about the size of them right now? Let's just pay attention to where these fish are sitting. That first fish over there on those two wood little pillars, this one on this big lay down, something to pay attention to. Go back. And I promise you, there's more than just that fish on there. So we're gonna make multiple casts, really hone in there. That's another thing to think about. 
when you catch one fish in the area, bass don't just sit alone. There's multiple fish there. So keep on casting around it. Let's see if there's one on the end of this tree right here. There he is. Oh, he spit it. Oh. Came off. He's so small, guys. All these fish. I hope these fish in this pond just didn't get really small. They're loaded on this brush pot or this uh, lay down, though. That's one thing I will say. There, there's another one. Just spit it out. Now he's got it again. They're so small. Like, so small. That kind of worries me. Come on, fish. Chasing bait right there. Literally. Oh. There he is. Another tiny guy. I'm really starting to get worried, guys. And I know it's not me. These fish are just... Every year it seems that they get smaller and smaller, but there, there's got to be bigger ones than this in here. I'm not buying it. I'm just not buying it. Either way, I'm having fun, man. Throwing a little tiny finesse rig. I know I'm throwing it on a bait caster. Should be throwing it on a spinning rod, but it's crazy, man. Oh, man, this is worrying me. Just about everybody I've had today has been like that. I don't know what to tell you about this fish not biting. That is so weird. Or, or not the fish not biting, but the smaller fish like that. And that kind of scares me. Come put some bait fish in here and feed them. But with that being said, I don't know if we're going to catch another fish bigger than those in here. We're going to have to come back a different day with different baits and see if we can catch some bigger ones. But what I am going to do is I'm going to show a bunch of catches from the last year or two that I caught out here. Because I know last year I caught a couple really good solid fish. year before I caught a couple really solid fish. And I want to put those catches in here. So I'm going to load those up. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video so far. Now let's go on to the catches. I'm a big fan of using it as a you know, moving bait and a slow moving bait at the same time. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, it's a huge one. I saw him come right off. Put him right up on the bank. There we go, baby. <laughs> he ain't a monster monster, but he's a good quality fish. Oh man, what a beautiful one right there. Let me show, let me tell you guys something right now. Look at that. That's a beautiful fish. He's about I'd say two and a quarter, maybe pushing two and about two and a half. Really thick. He's a he's a thick fish. He's not. That is a beautiful fish right there, guys. Let's get a quick release on him, and I'll show you guys how I caught that. There we go, guys. Beautiful little bass right here. Solid, thick, and healthy one. Let's get him back in the water. There he goes. Dude, the hook's head up. That's a big one. Oh my God. No freaking way. Get him up. <laughs> oh my God. God. He's solid, bro. I know, man. Woo! <laughs> What's wrong with that, Junior? Dude, the way you hooked up that scared me so much. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's a solid three and a half pounder, dude. Look at his stomach. They're bedding. They are bedding. Popping frog is going to get it done. You're going to get a couple more on this. I'm kind of jealous. There you go, man. There's your fish. That's why we brought that frog in the chatterbait out here is to catch big ones like this. 